Like I said, I'm Gunnery Sergeant Deborah Hamner. I'm the Musician Placement Director for the Southeast Region of the United States. Basically what that means is I'm the one person that gets to audition anybody interested in joining the Marine Corps Music Program, both high school and college level alike. And I get a chance to travel all over the 10 southern, southeasternmost states, so pretty much a little bit of North Carolina, a little bit of, well, all of Nashville, Tennessee, Baton Rouge, all southwest of there, including Puerto Rico. Um, so I get the opportunity to do all of the auditions. So our program is called the Musician Enlistment Option Program. It is a four-year obligation to the Marine Corps if you're interested in joining our program. It is called the Enlistment Option Program because of the fact that you take an audition in the beginning, it is one of our only 350 jobs in the Marine Corps that actually require you to audition and know what you're doing prior to coming into the Marine Corps. So, you know, any of the other jobs, if you qualify high enough on the test in the beginning, then you're able to come in and learn the job as you go. The musician program, you still go to a six-month course, but at the same time, you have to know the basics of musicians and how to play your instrument ahead of time. As musical ambassadors of the United States, we're pretty much the face of the Marine Corps, meaning a lot of people think of Marines as just, you know, we go out and win wars for the United States. Well, in our position, we get a chance to play and make, you know, people very emotional with the music that we're able to play and perform for them. President Clinton once said, the Marine Band's precision and discipline serve as a standard for aspiring musicians throughout the nation. You know, when you get out of the Marine Corps, even if it's only after a four-year four obligation, you know, you put on your resume that you're a United States Marine and a musician at the same time. It, it, they know that you're going to be disciplined, that you understand teamwork, that you're going to show up to, on time to work, and all of these other things that you can put onto your job resume in the first place. The different things that we're going to talk about as an overview, we're going to talk about the Marine Band Ensembles, its instrumentations and locations, the performance opportunities, professional development, how you become a Marine musician, the audition process, and then answer any questions. Also, I'm going to ask Staff Sergeant Phillips, who is nice enough to join me from the Paris Island Marine Band as well, a great trumpet player that you've all heard already. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about the day in the life of a band, because that's one of the most common questions that I get asked as well. And then we also have a local recruiter here to answer any other questions that you may have about the Marine Corps in general. The Marine Music Program, we do have 14 bands in total. One of them, the President's Own, which I'm sure you've all heard about in Washington, D.C. The Commandant's Own, which is the DNB as well. And then we have presently 12 Marine Corps bands across the United States. The President's Own, the auditions are very similar to a symphonic, a major symphony orchestras. They, go, they actually go into Washington, D.C. First of all, if you Google the President's Own, it'll tell you what the, where the vacancies are. There are very few vacancies, as many of you know. The last clarinet audition was had over 350 people auditioning for one spot. I know several of you guys have already told me about the different, you know, premier band personnel that you know of in person, so I know you're very familiar with the President's Own. 90% um, of them already have advanced degrees. They perform over 400 jobs across the United States, and they're located in Barracks 8th and I in Washington, D.C. as well. The same thing with the Commandant Zone. They're comprised of 79 musicians. They're a ceremonial music unit, which means you know they go out and do ceremonies, DCI-type events all over. A lot of times they work with the silent drill team. They travel with them. They perform over 400 jobs a year, and they're the only active duty drum and bugle corps in the nation, so none of the other branches of service have them at all. They also, if you notice, wear a different uniform. They're very traditional. They wear the red coats just like they did, the Marine Corps did originally a long time ago. They're located in Marine Barracks 8th and I, just like the President's Own Band as well. The Commandant's Own, the instrumentation, they do have soprano bugles, the mellophone, baritone, contrabass, and percussion. Their percussionists, they don't actually audition for a specific, like the quads or anything specific like that. They rotate around for what instrument they're playing. The same thing with the soprano and mellophone. All their bugles, basically they play on two valve G bugles. Um, so they do not go to the School of Music. Instead of going to the School of Music, they're going to go straight to Yuma, Arizona, where they learn their field show. And they're able to perform that and learn how to play the actual instrument that they're going to be playing on the field with the two valve G bugles. The mellophone player sometimes, if they don't, if they need a mellophone player to become a soprano because they've got the range or whatnot, then they can change them around. But basically, they audition 
just like we do for the field bands as well. The Marine Corps field bands, there are 12 field bands presently. There's, um, we're comprised of 50 enlisted musicians and one band officer. We do perform over 350 to 450 performances each year. And with that, we also still are able to do, you know, are able to have the 30 days of paid vacation. We're able to have, you know, the regular federal holidays off and all of the benefits that come along with the Marine Corps in general as well. Our mission, basically we're there to support, obviously, the President of the United States. Um, any change of commands that we have or retirement ceremonies, anything like that for the military. Obviously, we do parades all over the United States, the Great Circus Day Parade, um, all kinds of Veterans Day parades, anything else. Um, as far as concerts, we've gotten a chance to perform in many different places all over the world in the concert setting. When I was in Okinawa, then we were able to play with the 1CB band, the military band with them, and great group of musicians. It was an amazing experience. Music education and school tours. Obviously, it's a lot better to be able to go into a band and talk to a school when I've got the brass band behind me and Staff Sergeant Phillips on the road with me as well from the Paris Island Band. You know, it's a lot of great experience. And out back, we do have that table. And if you have not gotten a chance to get our jazz band CD, please help yourself this evening to make sure you get one. Um, I don't know how many we'll have back there tomorrow. As the ambassadors of the Marine Corps in the United States, like I already said, it's um, we get the opportunity to be the face of the Marine Corps. Our 12 bands are located. We have six bands out here on the East Coast. We have four bands out in California, one in, oh, in Hawaii and in Okinawa, Japan. And depending on where you are, it's gonna determine what type of performances you do. Like in Paris Island or San Diego, 41, or 42 performances are gonna be on the parade deck for every recruit graduation that takes place. So we don't travel quite as much in those areas where if you go to Mardi Gras or well to Louisiana, then they're gonna do a lot more traveling across the United States. <laughs> the instrumentation of the Marine Band, we have any instrument that you're gonna have in a concert band. All of our flute players are able to play piccolo as well. All, we do have like a bass, player, play, bass clarinet player, even though they auditioned on B flat, our saxophones all audition on alto or tenor saxophone, but we do obviously have all of the different forms of saxophone, trombones as well. Our rhythm section, the percussion, they're all able to read or to play mallet, set, and snare. And then all of our rhythm section is well versed in every variety of music. And we'll get into that a little bit more. The concert band opportunities, like I said, we're able to play in several different venues um, up here. As you can see, is for Marine Week in Boston, we get to do lots of different types of jobs like that, a lot of very professional looking auditoriums. The ceremonial band, where we were able to play um, for the reopening of the crown of the Statue of Liberty, for many different UFL championship games, for sporting events, for Mardi Gras parades all over, um, the Rose Bowl parade in the California, they're always doing those parades as well. So a lot of different events to travel and perform in many different places. And then we have the job out in Texas, the Fiesta, and then, like I said, the small ensembles. If we don't have the funding to send the entire band someplace, or if we have the too, too big of an or too small of an area to bring a whole band or in a gym, then we're going to obviously do um, provide a smaller ensemble with that as well. Travel and adventure. This is one of my favorite thing, parts about the Marine Corps and why I decided to stay in. It's not only camaraderie and being able to be a family with the rest of the group and traveling with them, but I've, just me in particular, I've gotten a chance to go to Okinawa to climb Mount Fuji twice, to see Hiroshima, to see Mount, or to see Mount Fuji, to go to Australia, Guam, New Zealand, Bermuda, Turkey, Greece, Thailand, all of these different places across the world and play with, like I already mentioned, the Okinawa band and the Bermuda band as well. Professional development. As far as professional development, um, the Marine Corps doesn't just want to take your four years of your career and expect you to, you know, just take what, the, what they can. They like to set you up for success as far as making sure you have your degree afterwards, helping you with tuition assistance um, through the colleges and uni universities. 
we are able to give you full tuition assistance while you're in the Marine Corps so you can take classes after work and also give you about $80,000 after your four years of service to further your degree afterwards. Guaranteed promotion, if you already have that college degree, then we're able to guarantee you a sergeant or an E5 rank within 36 months or three years. Um, we also, the musicians in the Marine Corps music program pick up promotion much faster than most of the other Marines in the different units. Leadership advancements. I came in as a clarinet player in 1995, and I played clarinet for six years, and then I switched over to be an enlisted conductor. My husband came in as a clarinet player in 1992, actually, and he switched over to be an instrument repair technician. We do have follow-on schools for each of these different enlistments opportunities. Um, we have the six-month school of music that's basically for everybody, and then an eight-month follow-on program later. My husband was able to go up to Red Wing in Minnesota to get his degree or to get his certificate for instrument repair. He's actually retired now. He just retired on Friday, and he is able to open up his own instrument repair shop from the home. As far as our band officers, a few people have asked me about the band officer position, and a lot of the, all of our band officers happen from the actual musician enlistment side. You have to be a musician enlistment and work your way up through the ranks in order to get that because we are, like I said, the face of the Marine Corps. So you have to understand the politics of everything. You have to understand, you know, how to tie in the civilian world to the Marine Corps world at the same time. In order to become a Marine musician, first you have to meet with our finest Marine recruiters and make sure that you're physically, mentally, and morally qualified, and they'll help you get ready for boot camp and do everything they can in order to help prepare you. They're gonna, have, they're gonna send to me a musician screening and evaluation form that basically tells me a little bit about where you are musically, what bands you've performed with, what solos you've done, if you've gone to college, if you're coming out of high school, what your basic background is. And then, like I said, I am the one person in this, these 10 states who do your audition, and I'm able to, you know, I'll listen to you over the phone most of the time first to see how you stand. And then I'll let you know, okay, I'm going to be up there in a week and a half, and we'll see how you do in person at that time. And I'll talk a little bit more about the audition process in order to get you musically qualified. The delayed entry program, again, like I said, the recruiters are going to be able to set you up for success for boot camp. They're going to help get you physically and mentally and morally prepared prepared, so they're going to take you out on runs, have you do a big workout so that you can lose whatever weight if you are happening to be overweight before joining our program. We do have the weight standards like everybody else. Recruit training. We are basically basic riflemen as Marines, so we all, all even the musicians, we go to basic training. It's a 13-week program where you're going to get in the absolute best shape of your entire life without having to pay a gym or a trainer, so um, you get a chance to do that. I'm not going to say it's all fun and games, but you do come out as a complete different person afterwards. MCT, Marine Combat Training, you get a chance to blow things up, pretty much play Doom in real life. You get to learn how to play, you know, do the, learn how to use the 250 golf, the 40, cal, or the 50 cal, the 240 golf, the Mark 19, all the different weapon systems in the Marine Corps. And then it's off to the School of Music in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Like I said, it is a six month program. It's basically a year's worth of college, all crammed into six months. You do get college credit for it, anywhere from about 12 to 20 credits for this school. It's located in Virginia Beach, Virginia. We train all of the military branches, so we're all in there together. So you may have a Navy person give, or somebody from the Navy giving you individual lessons and that kind of thing. We all work together for the same goal. Like I said, it is a six-month course. It's fully accredited. Actually, we just signed a contract with Berkeley University. A lot of our credits will tr directly transfer over to Berkeley University. You can continue your online schooling with them in order to get further your career in, with your degree in music. A lot of this is, some of it is online training, so you can go at your own pace. Like I said, if you're already a college graduate, you know the basic theory. You can take the computer classes and fly through some of this on your own. Like the music theory that you're training um, and things like that. You'll get a private lesson each week. You will sit in on concert band, a marching band, contemporary music. You'll sit in on like a jazz band or a combo, do improv, and then also be trained in MIDI if you're a keyboard or a guitar player. 
the auditions, as far as the auditions are concerned, the woodwinds and the brass all do the same thing. You're expected to know your major and your minor scales from memory. The full range of the instrument with your arpeggios, that's worth 10% of the audition. You have to prepare, play a prepared grade four solo or higher. And then you have to be able to sight read. And that's worth 50% because of the fact that we play so many jobs, we don't have time to rehearse. We just have to prepare very little and then get on with the commitments. So that's worth 50%. The percussion auditions, it's a little more in depth with all of our rhythm sections. They have to be able to play, and you can read this up there on your own. You have to be able to play, know all of your basic 26 rudiments. You have to play a rudimental and a concert band solo. You have to be able to sight read on the snare. And then on mallets, you do have to play a solo, know all of your scales from memory, two octaves. And then drum set, you have to play several different styles, swing in two, swing in four, and trading between the two. And then you have to be able to sight read on drum set as well. So the rhythm or the rhythm section takes much longer for any of that. And um, before we go into the review, I would like Staff Sergeant Phillips to come up and speak a little bit as far as the day in the life of the band. Basically, uh, a, an average day is based on what we have going on for that month, our operational tempo. I could speak on behalf of my band, being the fact that I'm stationed down in Paris Island, so our main focus is recruit graduations. So basically, let's say on a Monday, I come in 0730, or 730 for you guys, and uh, it's an hour worth of physical training because we have to stay in shape, especially being down here in South Carolina, so hot and uh, humid too. Uh, so we'll do an hour worth of that, which will consist of just running, pull-ups, or whatever the instructor feels like at that moment. We come back and then we'll have uh, various rehearsals. Uh, uh, our main focus for that week would be marching. So we'll have our, our marching rehearsal, then we'll have a rehearsal where we just focus on the music. So we'll go indoors and uh, we'll break off into sections. And, and this whole time it's around a two hour time span an hour outside an hour inside then of course we go to lunch uh, we come back and then we'll look at oh we may have a huge concert coming up like for instance this coming monday we'll be in aiken south carolina doing a concert so we'll prepare for that our our oic or our band officer will come out we have tunes already listed what we need to work on so we'll sectionalize with that then we'll come in and do a full rehearsal and that could take from one hour to three hours it all depends on what our mission is and then um at the end of the day we have something called logistical time it, you know for, for instance myself i'm a trumpet player but i'm also a conductor so i'll go into my collateral duty and i'll work on that and you know we have our younger marines that work in our supply section basically the the sections that keep the band running and uh, then after that, uh, it's around 4.30 and we get to go home. At that time, most of the Marines don't go home because it's that pride of belonging. And we stay after work to finish up any extra things that we have missed throughout the day. Or if we have trouble with our music, we all come together and we work on things. So you guys see us on YouTube or if you've ever seen a live performance of a Marine band, how clean and precise we are. I mean, we're, we're very meticulous of how we sound and how we look. You know, we basically do it for you guys. So that, that's our, our, our normal life, at least for me. And then on Fridays, I get to do um, a morning color ceremony, and then I get to play a recruit graduation, you know, basically sending these brand new Marines off into the Marine Corps with uh, some good music. And the, the parents and grandparents, they, they love it. You know, I still get emails to this day of, oh, you play for my son or daughter's graduation. I really appreciate what you do. So... At this time, do I have any questions? Huh? That's a good question. Huh? Wow. I, I joined in uh, 2002. I'm from New York. Um, so I was involved with 9-11 and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I felt at that time, what's the best way to serve my country? Well, I didn't want to join the Navy. You know, it, it literally, I walked into the recruiting department and I saw the Navy, looked at their stuff, what they had to offer. And the, the one person that didn't speak to me at all was the Marines. They just walked right by me. I was like, wow. But but it was the uniform. It, it was just, my uncle was a Vietnam vet, you know, and it's like, hey, you're going to be a Marine kind of thing. And so I went and talked to them and uh, it, 
from the, the first words they said, they, they, they had me hooked, you know, and then I, I thought, I should, I'm just going to do four years. I'm going to do four years and then um, I'm out. Well, nine years later, I'm still doing it because uh, just the opportunity, just like what Gunnery Star and Hamner said, we, the, the chances to travel, is just ridiculous. And I, I've been all over the place. I've been to Canada, Scotland, you name it, I've been there. So. Yeah, you want to take take this one? Basically, as far as that's concerned, um, you if you score high enough on your audition, you're guaranteed a specific, you can request to go to a specific band. And if there's an opening in that band, then we'll, they'll send you to that band. Um, if not, then basically, yeah, and then if not, if you don't score high enough for that, but you are a basic qualified Marine musician, then about halfway through the School of Music, they'll ask you what three bands would you like to go to, and then they'll try to get you to one of those three bands. Or, yeah, so we'll try to get you, no matter what, to where you want to go, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then the same thing with when you re-enlist, then if you ask for wherever you want to go, you put in an AA form and you request where you want to go and they'll try to get you to that position if it's possible. You know, some instrumentations like piano, we only have one piano player for, per band. And then the same thing with once you pick up the command element and the enlisted conductor, a drum major, and an instrument repair tech, or the small ensemble leader, it gets more difficult to put you in the band that you want because, I mean, it is like a three-year rotation. So it gets a little bit more difficult when you get up higher in rank, but it's also, they can plan ahead. And okay, you want to go to Hawaii? Well, this band director is, or this enlisted conductor is going to be leaving in about a year and a half. So just hold on where you are, and in a year and a half, we'll do the trade then. So, you know, it's, it's actually, it surprises me every day with how much they work with you to get you what you want to do in the Marine Corps, realistically. Yeah, and, and that's the same thing with the guaranteed promotions and all that. It is the one job that you have to be able to do. You know, this, I'm only looking for about 20 to 25 people per year in all 10 states that I cover. And that's, you know, and, and some of the instruments go by very quickly, like the trombone or the saxophones. I've already got 14 people in the delayed entry program for next year. So the only instrument right now that I'm looking for for until October of 2012 are the drum and bugle corps instruments, the clarinet and the mel or the clarinet and the French horn. Anything else, I'll listen to you. And if you're that good, then I'll try to find a spot for you. But other than that, I don't have a spot for you until October of 2012. So that's how demanding the music program is. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest ones I could think of, when I was stationed out in uh, 29 Palms, I got to, uh, it was a privilege to play at the estate funeral for President Ford, because uh, he, he did live in Palm Springs. And, uh, and then I got to play taps in front of the chapel, and then I was on CNN. So I kind of felt special. My, my grandma was pretty happy about that. I was nervous, but <laughs> everybody else thought, thought I, I sounded great. So that, that by far is the most memorable because it's a former president. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Like I said, I actually am flying to Washington, D.C. on Sunday morning, so I'm going to take off after at just t this evening. So there are jazz band CDs back there if anybody would like one. If anybody has any questions, then f please feel free to ask. Stester and Phillips, and as well as some of the local recruiters are going to be here in the area tomorrow as well. And um, I have business cards back there. If you need anything, just grab one and give me a call. And thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.